Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This short lecture of today, I'm going to discuss two things. The conditions resulting in disorders of hair pigmentation and the hair cosmetics. So let's proceed uh, for the lecture. Hair pigmentation. Hair color is one of the most striking mammalian character. In human, hair color is determined by, number one, the melanin that is incorporated into the hair shaft and the relative uh, proportion of uh, the different types of melanin, either a eumelanin which stains the hair black or brown or pheomelanin which stains the hair yellow or red. Then number and degree of melanization of the melanosomes. Hair fiber diameter. Thicker hairs are more pigmented. Medulation and the cuticle integrity. If the cuticle are disrupted, hairs look lighter in color. So these all are the factors that determine which is, yeah, what is the hair color. Biology of hair pigmentation. The hair melanin is formed by melanocytes that are situated in the hair bulb. That is the basic thing. So the melanocytes are located at the hair bulb. Ultrastructurally, the hair bulb melanocyte appear more melanogenic than epidermal melanocytes and their population density is much greater than in epidermis. So um, the melan melanocytes in the hair bulb are uh, not only more uh, in number, but they are more in function as well, and they produce more melanin as compared to the similar melanocytes in the basal layer of epidermis. The melanogenic activity in hair follicle is closely linked to the hair cycle. In pigmented hair follicles, there is increased melanogenesis continues throughout the anagen phase, that is anagen 5 and anagen 6 phase, and then ceases with onset of catagen phase. So the pigmentation and the growth of hair both continues hand in hand. As the hair keep on growing, the hair also keep on getting more and more pigment. Once the hair anagen phase ends, then this melanogenesis also ends. Variation in human color. The variation in human color occur most commonly in the European population. In the non-European hair are predominantly either dark brown or black. Although pockets of light shades do exist in some part of the world. So the main color variation we see is in the Europe, which ranges from the blonde to various shades of red and brown and grays. Hair color along with the skin and eye color is determined by multiple genes which are classified as SHEP genes by MIM classification. And these SHEP genes include OCA2, MC1R and TYRP. Red hair. Few melanin is the predominant pigment in some individuals with red hair or there is a mixture of eumelanin and pheomelanin. The melanocytes in pheomelanized hair follicle contain spherical melanosomes. In those showing mixed eu and pheomelanin, melanocytes contain either spherical or ellips uh, ellipsoid uh, melanosomes. So the spherical melanosomes are a feature of uh, pheomelanin and the um, uh, ellipsoid melanosomes is a feature of eumelanin. Synthesis of eumelanin or pheomelanin are both determined by activation or blockade respectively of melanocotton receptor 1. This receptor is activated by melanocyte stimulating hormone MSH and reduced function of the receptors is associated with red hairs. So if the hormone is active 
and the receptor is active, the hair will be more pigmented. If the receptor is uh, uh, inactive, then the pigmentation of hair will be less. And red hair means little pigmentation. So these are the two type of melanin. The eumelanin stains the hair black or brown, while few melanin stains the uh, it, eumelanin means less melanin. And uh, sorry, few melanin means less melanin. So either the hairs will be blonde or red when there is complete loss of melanin. Then how the graying of hairs occur, which is also known as the kennedys. The graying of hair is usually a manifestation of aging process, we all know. In white races, white hair appear by the age of 34 years with plus minus 9 years. And by age of 50, 50% 50 of the population have at least 50% of the gray hairs. While in black people, the onset is quite late and they get graying first by 43 or 44 years plus minus 10 years. The beard and mustaches are going to get gray earlier than the scalp hair. On the scalp, the graying start from the temple, followed by crown and the latest by it reaches to the occipital region. It is suggested that hair graying is mainly determined by genetic factor. So there are many young boys who's, uh, who come to us with their mothers that they are having early graying. So usually in most of these cases, this early graying is genetic and their parents have also developed gray hairs in their early 20s. The visual impression of graying is due to the admixture of pigment and pigmented and white hairs. So melanization of pigmented hair on the gray scalp may be reduced compared to the normally pigmented hair. So there will be overall reduction of melanogenesis and melanosomes in patients who are aging. So in addition to the black hairs which are preserved, the blackness will not be that bright as we see in young people. There is loss of hair pigment is associated with decrease and eventual cessation of tyrosinase activity in the lower bulb. And the melanocytes are absent from the bulb of white hairs. So initially there is reduction in melanocyte synthesis or tyrosinase activity and later on there will be complete uh, loss of melanocytes within the hair bulb. The mechanism of hair graying has not been determined with certainty. It seems most likely to be due to exhaustion of the melanocyte stem cell reservoir. An alternate explanation is that the melanocytes are depleted as a result of accumulation of hydrogen peroxide in the hair follicles. The probable mechanism of rapid graying in is the selective shedding of pigmented hair in diffuse alopecia areata. You all know that the alopecia areata attack pigmented hair, but the hairs which develop after, after recovery are usually white and non-pigmented. And alopecia areata tends to affect less the hairs which are white. In general, graying of hair is progressive and permanent but there are occasional reports of repigmentation of previously non-pigmented hair. So this is the mechanism of gray hairs. You can see the normal pigmented hair. These are the stem cells and these are the melanocytes present at the hair bulb and they produce pigment and give hair its visible color. But as the melanocyte stem cells in the hair follicle ages, they disappear. This causes pigment producing melanocytes to disappear as well and resulting in graying of the hair. So you can see the difference between a pigmented hair with lots of melanin pigmentation and melanocytes present at the hair bulb and the gray hair in which there is very few melanin pigmentation and decrease in number of 
melanocytes in the hair bulb. Premature greying. Association between premature greying and certain organ-specific autoimmune diseases is well recognized, for example, pernicious anemia. The premature greying is a feature of number of genetic diseases, for example, Werner Rothman Thompson syndrome, which are due to defect in DNA. In progeria, it is associated with marked loss of the scalp hair as well as early as two years of age. So, in addition to grain, there is hair loss as well. In Brooks syndrome, it is associated with premolar hypodontia and palmoplantar hyperhidrosis. One third of patients with chromosome 5P or Chi-Decat syndrome have premature grain. So the premature grain is associated with certain syndrome like Werner syndrome, like Rothman Thompson syndrome, like progeria, like Brooks syndrome, and like Chi-Decat syndrome. Then poliosis. Poliosis is defined as a presence of a localized patch of white hair resulting from absence or deficiency of melanin in group of neighboring follicles. So it's a localized whitening of the hairs, not a diffuse whitening. There is uh, pigment absence can be congenital or acquired. Such migratory defects may be restricted to the skin, but they can be associated abnormalities in other organs like eyes or ear. Acquired forms of poliosis are due to vitiligo or overgrowth of non-pigmented hair following alopecia areata. The hereditary pigmentary defects. Loss of hair pigment is seen in albinism, in pyebaldism, in Wardenberg syndrome, in tuberous sclerosis, and, and in silver hair syndrome. Acquired pigment defects. As mentioned before, in vitiligo, the white patches of skin have white hairs. Scattered white hairs on the scalp may occur in children with vitiligo. In alopecia areata, again mentioned before, regrowing hairs are frequently white. It may remain so, although most cases, hair pigmentation recovers. In Vogot Koyanagi Harada syndrome, is a post-febrile condition comprising of bilateral uveitis, labyrinthine def deafness, tinnitus, vitiligo, poliosis, and alopecia areata. L. Zendrini syndrome shows similar to Vogot Koyanagi Harada syndrome, but it combines unilateral facial vitiligo with retinitis, with hypoacusis, and poliosis of eyebrows and eyelashes. Permanent loss of hair pigment may be induced by inflammatory process that damage melanocytes like herpes zoster. So herpes zoster in a hairy area may result in loss of pigmentation. X-ray irradiation often cause permanent hair loss but if it is less intense, then the hair loss will not occur and only the hair will lose their pigment. Color changes induced by drugs and other chemicals. Dithranol, a very common drug which was used but not anymore in psoriasis, stain the hair light color or gray, mahogany brown. Then resorcin stains color black or white hair uh, uh, stains black or the white hairs are yellow or yellow brown color. Then chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine cause reversible bleaching of the hair. Tyrosine kinase inhibitors imitinib causes both skin hypopigmentation and reversal of hair grain. The prostaglandin growth factor 2 alpha analogs such as iron uh, Iotenoprost causes darkening of eyelashes. Iotenoprost is used as an ingredient in some preparation for uh, prolongation of eyelashes, which is, of course, not the mechanism of action. The mechanism of action is actually the darkening of hair, which results or which looks like uh, that the eyelashes 
have grown. Color change is induced by the nutritional deficiencies. The copper deficiencies cause oachromatrichia uh, occur in humans as well as in humans as in Menke, in the Menke's kinky hair syndrome. In protein energy malnutrition as in Kawashirkor, the normal black hair becomes brown or reddish brown uh, and the brown hairs become blonde. An intermittent protein malnutrition lead to flag sign of Kawashirko, that is alternating white, which is abnormal and dark bands. Changes similar to Kawashirko is described in severe ulcerative colitis and after extensive bowel resection. Hair color in metabolic disorders. Penile ketone urea, children have blonde hairs due to low level of hair melanin. Then in homocysteine urea, patient may have light color or fine hairs. And porphyria usually causes darkening of the hair. Accidental hair discoloration. Exposure of high concentration of copper in industry or from the tap water or in swimming pool may cause green hair particularly visible in blonde scalp. A yellow hair color is not uncommon in white or gray hair heavy smokers resulting from tar which is present in the cigarette smoke. Yellow staining of hair also occur from picric acid and from dithranol. Hair color resulting from physical phenomena. In general, the non-pigmented hair with broad medulla appear paler than non-medulated hair. The normal withering of hairs that is damaging of the hair along its length lead to the terminal part of air, hair appearing lighter than the rest. This also applies to trichorexis nodosa, which is the excessive withering in which patient has light or brittle hair. So the, if hair are withered or damaged, they will look lighter in color. The Findlay showed that perceived color of hair is affected by physical characters of the hair shaft and bear little relationship to the true chromicity of the shaft. Hair on the exposed part may be bleached by sunlight. So usually the hair exposed to sun are also light in color. Now comes to the second part of the lecture. That part is also interesting because in this part we are going to discuss the chemical compositions and few side effects and good effects of the hair cosmetics. So the first and the most widely used hair cosmetic is the shampoo. Shampoo is defined as a suitable detergent for washing hair. It must remove the grease and other particulate matter from the scalp. Shampoo is generally made by combining a surfactant, most often sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium or sodium uh, lute, uh, lurith sulfate. The sulfate ingredient act as surfactants, trapping oil and other contaminants similar to what is done by a soap. The consumer tends to equate the efficacy of a shampoo by the, um, by the foam it creates. So in Western society, uh, the shampoo which does not foam good does not sell good. Shampoo must be non-toxic and non-irritant, uh, either to the skin or the eyes, uh, at a concentration which is used by the consumers. However, allergic contact dermatitis may result from a shampoo due to the aesthetic additives, preservatives, and biocides in the shampoos. There are few specialized kinds of shampoos which need discussion. The anti-dandruff shampoo. These shampoos usually contain fungicide like ketoconazole, zinc parathione, or selenium disulfide. Coal tar and salicylic acid derivatives are often used in shampoos as well. Alternate to the medicated shampoos, such anti-dandruff is achieved by adding tea tree oil or herbal extracts in shampoo. Then color hair shampoos. 
these shampoos are not different from the other shampoos, but just they contain the gentle cleansers. Then baby shampoos. These are widely used for infants and young children, and they are diluted and less irritating and are less prone to produce stinging or burning sensations, especially in the eyes. And the pH is adjusted to be approximately 7. And the monoanionic sulfonated surfactants and viscosity increasing or foam stabilizing alcoholamides are much less common in a good baby shampoo. Then sulfate-free shampoo. There is a fashion of using a sulfate-free shampoo. These are composed of natural ingredients and are free from both sodium lauryl sulfate and sodium lurex sulfate. These shampoos use alternate surfactants to cleanse the hair. So the uh, tea tree shampoo or herbal extract shampoo are sulfate-free shampoo. The sulfate-free shampoo help the scalp with moisture retention, especially useful for those having the dry and damaged hair and retaining the natural moisturizer will help with overall hair health. Conditioners. Conditioners have a range of characteristics that may contribute to shine, reduction in static electricity, protection from the ultraviolet radiation, and possibly increasing the hair strength. So a lot of, prop lot of properties and advantages. Conditioners comprise of free of fatty acids and alcohols, natural triglycerides like almond, avocado, corn or olive oil. They contain waxes like beeswax or jojoba oil, mink oil and lanolin. They contain phospholipids like egg yolk or soybean. They contain vitamin A, B or E, protein hydrolysates of silk, collagen, keratin, which is from horn and hoof, gelatin and other proteins. So the condition, conditioners contain a huge range of chemicals which have a little um, little uh, character, which have characters of producing shine and uh, strength. Conditioners provide lubrication and gloss, render the hair easier to comb and style. Most commonly used are those uh, combined with shampoos as two-in-one preparations. So usually it is better to use the same conditioner which is marketed with the shampoo because both the conditioner and shampoo would have the same pH. Other form of conditioners may be applied as a separate procedure and take the form of a cream or emulsion uh, and which is applied for a few minutes after washing and then rinsed off. So these are usually called as the deep conditioners, which are left for about uh, 30 minutes, often with a damp heat. So these conditioners, these kind of conditioners or this kind of maneuver will prolong the shine and uh, strength of the hair. Hair oil are traditional conditioners. Men uh, may use the brillanti, bri uh, uh, brillant, uh, brillantines and greases and oil to leave the hair a glossy and sleek look. Where the hair is significantly dry or damaged or the scalp is inflamed and eczematous, Conditioners may be used as a shampoo substitutes in same manner that one might advocate as emollients or soap substitutes in skin with eczema. So even the conditioners can take the role of a shampoo in people who have dry and eczematous uh, skin. The conditioners will mix with water to remove, remove the surface dirt and odor, but will not subject the hair and scalp to the powerful solvent effect of the shampoos. So although there will be some cleaning, but it will not be as good as a normal shampoo. Then the third aspect is again very important and that is the hair, cos hair co coloring, cosmetic hair coloring. 
which this has increased enormously during the last 50 years, the penetration of dyes into the hair depends on the molecular size and the aqueous swelling of the hair at the time of application of the dye. The basicity of the dye is also important and the most successful dyes are those with small molecules. The most common adverse effect of the hair dye is allergic contact sensitivity, which is mainly due to the paraphenylene diamine, abbreviated as PPD, and the prevalence is about 4 to 6 percent. And you should also be aware of the fact that allergic contact dermatitis take a lot of time to develop. So no one is going to develop the allergic contact sensitivity to a hair dye at first application. And usually the uh, sensitivity of a dye develops after years of use of the dyes by a cumulative effect of this allergic contact dermatitis. The arylamine and amino nitrophenol components give rise to worry as well, but systemic reviews suggest that these <coughs> ingredients are not damaging to the individuals, but can be hazardous to the hairdressers who are applying these hair coloring agents frequently. All those individuals who are allergic to PPD dyes or other ingredients of hair dye can switch over to vegetable dyes. The vegetable dye is henna, which is used to give the reddish auburn shades. It is obtained from sherbs, which are found in North Africa and Middle East. The active principle is an acidic nephthoquinone, and traditionally it is applied as a thick paste and left uh, on the scalp for 5 to 60 minutes and the effect lasts for about 10 weeks and the process is non-toxic but messy. The henna rinses with rinses are mixtures of henna and powdered indigo leaves that produce some blue-black shades. Then metallic dyes. These are again alternates to PPD. The traditionally the hair dyes for men were of this type as the color changes occur less rapidly and are not immediately obvious. The inorganic salts are used either as oxidates from the reduction of the metal salt by the keratin of the hair or sulfides from the action of sulfur on the keratin of the hair on the metal. So uh, these inorganic salts are produce their color by either oxidation or sulfation. They all give a dull metallic appearance and may cause the hair brittle and damage. Lead acetate give hair a brown to black shade. Silver nitrate produce greenish black shade. And uh, in case of a blonde hairs, uh, silver nitrate may turn the ash blonde to black by, uh, by adding copper, cobalt, or nickel. The bismuth salt will give a hair a brown shade. Metallic dyes cannot be removed, and hence the hair has to grow out to remove the metallic dyes. Then synthetic organic dyes. These are of three types, temporary, semi-permanent, and permanent. The temporary wash out with one shampoo and last no longer than one week. They are available as aerosol sprays and disadvantage of such vehicle is their tendency to flake off on the clothing. Then the semi-permanent dyes. They are used frequently at home and also in saloon. They are sufficiently of small molecules and penetrate the cortex of the hair shaft. They are intrinsically colored and no developers is used uh, in such kind of dyes. Then comes the permanent dyes. They do not rely on the natural color of single chemical and require an oxidative process and use this hydrogen peroxide for this process to occur and produce the final color. Next, next uh, hair cosmetic is the bleaches. Bleaches is used both to lighten the hair color and prepare it to take the hair dye. Bleaching is an oxidative alkaline treatment that oxidizes and bleaches the melanin. 
it is quite damaging to the hair, rendering them dry and porous and prone them to tangle. And overuse of bleaches may cause the hair to fracture. Home bleaching is performed with 6% hydrogen peroxide ammonia to speed the reaction, which otherwise take 12 hours. Saloon use more powerful bleach cream, powder and pastes, which are faster. The bleaching is terminated by shampooing or an acid rinse. Then permanent waving. The permanent waving is often referred to as a perm, is defined as a process of changing the shape of the hair so that the new shape persists through several shampoos. This is done through restructuring the disulfide amino acid bond within the hair. Whatever process is used, three stages are involved. Physical or chemical softening of the hair first, then reshaping of the hair, then hardening of the fiber to retain the reshaped position. So first is the physical or chemical softening, then reshaping by the special curls, and then hardening of fibers by heating. Softening. So the first process is a softening of hairs. Water can extend the hydrogen bond between adjacent peptides in keratin molecule allowing temporary reshaping of hair exposed to high humidity or re-wetting. To obtain a more durable effect, steam may be used. Heat or steam alone are rarely acceptable because their effects are temporary and treatment is uncomfortable. Heat is more effectively employed in conjunction with ammonium hydroxide and potassium bisulfide or triethanolamine. After, so the softening is done mainly by water and, main, and by heating in conjunction with certain chemicals. Reshaping. After um, softening, the reshaping is done by the curl or tightness uh, curl or tightness of permanent wave depends upon the diameter of the rollers and size of the strand wound, wound round the roller. Increasing the time of exposure to perming solution up to 20 minutes increases the curl. The home permanent waves are weaker. The tepid weaving involving using a weep, weaker thioglycate solution plus warm air. Then the last process of uh, permanent hair reshaping is hardening. In general, the process involves reversal of soft softening. The atmospheric oxid oxidation efficiently neutralizes the waving process. The method is slow and roller must be left in position for several hours overnight. Chemical oxidation is now the rule. The hairdressers generally use hydrogen peroxide, whereas most solutions for home use contain sodium uh, perborate and percarbonate or sodium potassium bromate. Some practical procedures like hot waving. This is a four-stage process in which first shampooing is done, then hair is divided and rollers or curls applied under slight tension, then waving solution is applied and then heating. So the four processes will lead to permanent waving in the hairs. There is a cold waving. This involves initial shampooing, hair division into the locks, then moisturizing with waving solution and application of chloroquinogenol curlers. The softening time is 10 to 20 minutes. Occasionally, mild heat is included, but usually it is should not be used in cold waving. And um, the head is, uh, is exposed to the natural heat by enclosing the scalp in a plastic bag. After removing the curlers, further hardening solution is usually applied. The loose curl waves last for no more than a few weeks, but tight curl styles may persist for 4 to 12 months. Hair straightening. 
The principal method used to straighten the hair are similar to those which are used for the waving because this is done mainly to the curly, naturally curly hairs. The practice is associated with range of problems and ultimately contribute to uh, non-scarring and scarring alopecia. Pomades are used uh, by men with relatively short hair. They are greasy and act by plastering the hairs into a position. Shampooing is carried out and after drying, the oil is applied like, like petroli, petroli, petroleum jelly. Heat pressing with hot comb is used, causing the breakage and reforming of disulfide bonds along the hair to be molded straight. Then structural damage uh, and uh, breakage of hair is common with this process and scarring alopecia may occur as a result of hot waxes entering the follicles. Cold methods. Chemical methods employed using alkaline reducing agents, caustics, thioglycates, ammonium carbonate and sodium bisulfide. They are combed through the hair and left for 15 to 20 minutes and the hairs are combed and straightened again. These preparations are limited to saloons because of the potential of causing irritant dermatitis and damage to the hair. Hair setting. Most of us use this hair setting lotions and uh, their composition have changed considerably in the recent years. The traditional semi-liquid gel based on based on water-soluble gums, have been replaced by various synthetic polymers and aerosol foams in sprays, in liquids, and in gels. Most are based on PVP in a gelled aqua solution and give an attractive, glossy, non-greasy appearance. So this brings to the end of this talk. So after that, only one talk on hair is left and that talk will be hypertrichosis and hirsutism. So uh, I will be delivering this talk very soon. Hope, to hope that you have a good day. Thank you very much for patient listening.